So, um, this is all naturally going to be a bit embarrassing for me because uh, this rat's nest obviously looks pretty crap and it's just tables all over the place. Uh, and you guys are welcome to give me crap about it. You know, just go easy on me. But this is actually my HTPC um, that I am using uh, to play back videos onto my TV right here. Um, you know, to watch anime, Netflix, whatever I have going on. And this was actually put together from parts that I had lying around the house. For example, this uh, mini ITX board. Um, well, okay. I actually had the i5-4440 inside of here and it was a working chip and I thought, you know what, let's just buy a cheap motherboard to go together with this and uh, make a PC. And, well, other parts I did have lying around the house, like that one, that power supply right there. And I've even got a hard drive dangling right there. And obviously it does look like crap because when I was temporarily putting this together, the one thing that I did not have was a case to put all of this into. So it just looked like that for the longest time and I've always hated it. But today, 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 today is the day that I am doing something different about it. Well, something about it. And this is what I am gonna stick it into. This is the Geek A35S and uh, it's a mini ITX case. It doesn't look like much right now because this is actually a computer case that you have to put together kind of like gunpla instructions, isn't it? <laughs> it kind of like looks like gunpla instructions, but it's also kind of like, you know, IKEA, Legos and whatnot. And I'm I'm kind of super excited to put this together because I kind of enjoy building gunpla, you know, Legos, IKEA stuff. <laughs> And this is going to be my first time building a case from scratch as well because there's not a lot of cases which actually do this. So that's going to be really interesting. But what's also going to be really nice is finally being able to put all of this into a computer case and just have this place looking tidy for once. So let's get into it. I'm uh, just about done with uh, the frame of the uh, PC, as you can see right here. It's coming along quite well. Um, I did have a little bit of uh, guessing as to uh, what orientation this would come on in, and I actually had to refer to the manuals a lot for that. But, uh, you know, overall not too difficult. The uh, material here is a little bit thin, however, these uh, metal pieces, so that's a bit of a concerned but I did run into a little bit of problem because as you can see here I've actually got two manuals and the reason for that is because I did it this is my original manual by the way the one on the um right here and I did not notice that what I have here is actually a version one manual so for the longest time I was actually looking for parts which I could not find I was like hey wait wait a minute isn't there like a 
you know, this this part here does not exist, and I was like constantly looking for it before I was like thinking to myself, maybe, maybe the manual that I have isn't like for an updated version, because these weren't provided to me, by the way. Okay, um, these were uh, provided to me by another YouTuber, and I just ended up using them, and uh, so I went online. I looked again for another manual, and I found this guy on uh, one of the uh, internet listings for this case. And so I was like, hey, that that right there looks exactly like the one I have in the case. So I immediately thought like, okay, this is it, this is it. So <laughs> I started to print it out and I'm glad I did because look at that, even the first few steps, if you guys can see, even the first few steps are like really different from one another. So yeah, that was a bit of a, um, what do you call it? A roadblock. But yeah, in terms of current progress right now, I am actually going to be putting together the uh, motherboard inside because I am just about here in the installation, right? And I'm already done with the uh, cooling. So yeah, hopefully this goes together smoothly. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be putting it together, putting the uh, parts in already. So yeah, let's continue. Okay, so um, another quick update. Unfortunately for me, we have hit uh, roadblock number two, in which, uh, as you can see here, my PCI Express riser cable, uh, that probably gives you a better view. This is my PCI Express riser cable that I got with this uh, case. And what is supposed to happen is that, uh, let's see if we can get a good view on this, this uh, hose, for this PCI Express, do not meet with this two holes down here. And these two holes are actually uh, important because that's where you install the standoffs uh, on this side. And uh, it's supposed to keep this in place. Um, so that's not happening. And that's obviously because uh, this cable is just too short for my board. My board seems to have a, a long elongated before it reaches you know, it doesn't use the I guess typically in a motherboard um, it would use the uh, first slot starts at the first slot but this one starts at the second slot onwards and yeah I mean okay to be fair it's not a huge setback for me because I never did plan on uh, using a graphics card with this uh, computer. Um, I'm just going to use the internal IGP because it, again, it's just for a HD um, PC setup. So I, I don't really care too much. But down the line, if I do intend to get a uh, graphics card for it, I would need a new riser cable, which is a shame. So I'm just going to remove this and proceed without it for now.
Okay, so I am pretty much done with this build for now. Um, I haven't put in the uh, side panel just yet. And that is because the cooler that I have in here at the moment is a bit too big for that. So until I change this to a more low profile cooler, well, I can't really close the case. Now, getting into the build, I ran into some issues when putting this together. And the first has to do with a shortage of uh, parts, in particular the T-nuts. Now, uh, this top panel requires four. I only received two and I used it in these two opposite corners right here. And so these and that one are not secured and just flop around like that. Obviously, this is something which I can replace by myself. They're relatively easy to get, but I shouldn't have to, right? I shouldn't have to because this is something which should have been provided out of the box in correct numbers. So I'm just a little bit displeased by that. Now, moving into the second one, as you notice, I have the side panel mounted already, but I only have three screws and not this one. Why is this? thumb screw not in you might wonder check that out it just goes right in and that is because it is of the wrong threading size i have no idea how in their infinite wisdom they got this correctly they got this correctly they got this correctly which is on the same bloody bar but they still managed to thread this in the wrong size yeah it's something which I can fix with some um, metal epoxy to just fill up um, the hole and just re-thread it. But again, this is not something which I should have to do to the case to get it to work. You know what I mean? Everything should be perfectly fine. You know, this is just a given. The third one is a little bit of a nitpick of mine and it may or may not be their problem but the USB 3.0 port here as you can see sticks out quite a bit from the front of the case. Um, this may have something to do with me torquing it a little bit too much and bringing it too forward but yeah. Oh and um, I think I failed to mention it in the previous video but I'm actually using a 1U power supply here at least it looks like a 1U power supply and it is rated at 500 watts and is fully modular, which should be perfectly fine for this system. In fact, it's way too much for this system. But in the event that I decide to stick a uh, graphics card in after I get a right length uh, PCI Express riser cable, yeah, I should be able to run a graphics card in this as well. And with the case put together somewhat, we finally get a good look at it. Overall, it sizes in at 125mm wide, 265mm deep, and 240mm tall, which is extremely compact. And as for cooling, there are slots above for two 90mm fans, though those are currently empty in my case, as at the moment, I don't exactly have any 90mm fans lying around. There are also ventilation holes on the side panel which should help a lot with the temperatures for the CPU and GPU. And speaking of CPU and GPU, you're going to want to get a cooler uh, lower than 53mm in height. And as for the GPU, the maximum length that the case will fit is 241mm, which means that you should be able to fit up to an RTX 3070 in here though you'd probably also want to make sure that you get a 1U PSU which does at least 650 watts. Back to the CPU cooler as well, if you need to work with a back mounting plate, you get plenty of access on the back to do just that, though if you're looking to also fit a GPU in here, I would be very cautious about the thickness of that mounting bracket as it could interfere with the GPU. In terms of storage, if you're using an M.2 on your board, then that's probably not going to be a big issue. But if you need additional storage, then there is one more slot to fit a 2.5 inch SATA SSD or hard drive. Okay, so with the case fully assembled, well, not fully, um, it is time for some closing thoughts. While the process of building up this case wasn't too difficult, I am just a bit disappointed with this case. 
See, I don't mind if a case is something you have to assemble yourself with slightly cheaper parts made of acrylic and thinner metals, as long as it goes together just fine and is quite solid. And to be fair to this case, it is quite a solid case now that it is put together and building inside it was pretty easy and straightforward. The PCI Express riser cable being too short was pretty much my fault as I bought it separately and that's something that I didn't really expect but what I can't get over however is how the provided parts were short of what I needed or how the you know whole threading was of the wrong size and just not having a manual with my package. While I really want to like this case for what it represents of a nice little ITX project that you can build for yourself um, for just about 150 ringgit or the equivalent of 35 US dollars, I can't really overlook how it I can't even put the case together properly due to the lack of QC or quality control. To me, if it meant making a better product, I would gladly pay more for that extra QC cost, but as it stands, I like the way it looks. I like how small it is, but I can't really recommend that someone get this because it just feels like a bit of a hit and miss. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's the end of the review build. If you'd like to get one for yourself, then if I have a link for you, I will leave it in the description below. As usual, like if you liked, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell icon to be notified for any new videos. My name is Yang, the tech rodent, and I actually have a soft spot for ITX builds or just small machines in general because it's always really cool to see so much packed in so little, you know, it's just so interesting. <laughs> I'll see you guys around.